it comes to designing your kitchen, there's hardly an argument for which type of range is better, gas, electrical, or induction. Because a 30 inch gas range takes up the same amount of space as a 30 inch induction range, no matter which kitchen you put it in. In this video, I'm answering three main questions. What are the biggest factors in determining range placement within a kitchen? What are the main differences between gas, electric, and induction? And third, which one is objectively the right choice? But first, an experiment. Inquiring minds want to know which will boil water faster, gas, induction, or electric. Well, I've set up this little experiment to help us figure that out. Now, I don't have a gas range, but I do have the gas burner on my barbecue. I've got this old school style uh, coily electric thing. It's more of a fire hazard than anything, but it's gonna have to do. And I have this little induction range top thingy that uh, will hopefully boil some water as well. I've never turned it on and hopefully this experiment uh, won't be a bust. I should have tested that beforehand. Anyway, let's dive in. All right, I poured one cup of water into this pot. I figure we'll start with the gas and then we'll work our way down the line to see which one is more efficient. Hopefully this will light. Timer is set. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of crud. Oh, there you kind of see it. Yay. All right, timer started. <laughs> I'm so excited. Really cold out. Put my hood up. And maybe because I'm outside and it's cold out today that this would actually take less time inside. Starting to see steam. And if this actually was a range, it probably would work even better. 99.9. Can you see that? 99.9. Five minutes and 40 six seconds. Do another cup of water. All right, time for test number two. Okay, now we wait. I have a feeling this is gonna take longer, but uh, we'll see. Twenty-nine degrees, okay, well, we're going in the right direction. Seventy degrees, not bad. Okay, so we're officially past the time that it took the gas. We're gonna keep this thing going. We're getting close. So we're 10 minutes in. It doesn't seem to want to hit 99 or 100 degrees. It's kind of, it's kind of stopped at 95 degrees. So I'm gonna call it at 10 minutes 33. There we go again. Third cup of water. Ooh, that's close. Okay, now we have the induction. I have a feeling this is gonna be way faster because we're already at 45 degrees and we're less than a minute in. Yeah, by far induction is gonna be a lot faster than both gas and obviously this coiled wreck. Uh, we're a minute 40, we're already at 68 degrees. What's interesting about this one, which I really didn't show you in these other ones, well, I'm not gonna really show you here either, but the bubbles are really consistent around the whole thing. We're on this, bubbles were kind of off to one side. Look at it boiling, wow. Yeah, we're there, 100 degrees, two minutes and 43 seconds. I mean, look, this is really boiling. Clearly the induction range is much quicker than the other options out there. But what does this mean for your kitchen? While everyone's kitchen will be different, there are some basic rules that should be followed when you're considering where to place your range. You'll want your range to be placed in such a way that it's not interrupting the flow of traffic. Because while you're in there cooking a meal for supper, you don't want to be interrupted by people running through back and forth from, say, the mudroom to the living room or other parts of your home. Not only is this a little more convenient for you, but it's also safer overall for everybody in the event that you're taking something out of the oven or off the stove top that's very hot and a kid or someone else is coming through that's just not really paying attention and all of a sudden you have an accident and you burn somebody or you just spill it which is just generally annoying. It's absolutely critical that you have landing area on both sides of your range. This goes without saying it's a basic rule in kitchen design. It should always be followed and I think there should never be a case where you can at least try to get some landing area on both sides of that range. Now the NKBA has guidelines for the minimums of that but I'd say at least get 15 to 18 inches on both sides more is better if you can you should never have your range against a wall or on the end of an open run where there's nothing on the other end of it in the event that your range or range top is in an island make sure that you have ample space behind it so it creates an overall safer environment for the range to be used the location of your range should also be determined on where you are going to vent that range because those two things go hand in hand you should never have a range that is not vented and it should always be vented to the outside yes you can get recirculating vents and they do in a pinch, but 
The best case scenario is to get that thing vented outside, get all those smells and all those fumes and some of the other toxic chemicals that could be in the air outside and not inside your home. Ventilation also allows you to add a little bit of wow factor to your kitchen because this is a place normally where you can add tile and some kind of fancy hood if you want it to, just to give your kitchen some more stylistic appeal. I try to sound like an interior designer, but it never works. Stylistic appeal, I don't think that's a thing. Key point is make sure that that thing is ventilated so that's going to determine which wall or where in your kitchen it can be placed. One thing you do need to consider is how it looks. Where in the kitchen does it look good? Are you trying to center it somewhere? Is it placed in a position where you're like, ah, I don't know if that's really the right spot. It doesn't really do anything for me. There's no stylistic appeal to it, but definitely not at the expense of say ventilation and some of the other rules that I'm outlining. This isn't a hard fast rule, but I think the range should be in close proximity to the sink. Those two things definitely are a workflow together. You use your range in tandem with your sink. And so having those two things separated too far could be an annoyance. Also, you don't want to create a bottleneck by having those things back to back. I mentioned this before in other videos. So there's a balance that needs to be made between the location of the range and the location of the sink. Also, this comes down to obviously the size of your kitchen and what you can allow in terms of distance between those two things. Here I go with my hands again. But I think having them within three or four feet of each other is a pretty good rule to follow. Having proper clearance from the range to the next adjacent surface is also very important. Yes, there are standards and I talk about them 42 inches, 48 inches, 60 inches, whatever it is, make sure that for the way you're using your kitchen, there is ample space that people can walk through there if they need to, and that there's enough room to do what you need to do. Opening doors, bending down, getting into things, other people walking by, two appliance doors open at the same time. Go through those scenarios to make sure that you do have proper clearance from the range to other working surfaces. Fuel types last on my little list, but it is something to think about if in the future you are upgrading or changing from say an electric to a gas range. Well, that requires installation of tubing for the gas lines. And so the range placement in that situation could be a deciding factor on where you want to place it now if you're going to change that in the future. Did I mention ventilation is important? <laughs> Just get the thing vented, all right? The three main choices that we have as consumers are electric, gas, and induction when it comes to the types of ranges that we can select from. The electric range uses an electric coil to heat up the cookware. They're usually more affordable and relatively easy to clean, especially modern ones that have a flat ceramic top. While they might be easier to clean, they do take more time to heat the cookware. My experiment showed that between induction and electric, it took three times the amount of time to boil one cup of water and they're not very precise. I couldn't even get my water to boil to 100 degrees. Doesn't seem to want to hit 99 or 100 degrees. Where the other two, gas and induction, easily reach that temperature. Five minutes and 46. Two minutes and 43 seconds. Now the gas range uses gas to make a flame so that you can heat your cookware. And they are preferred by many professional chefs because of their precise controls. In my experiment, it took half the amount of time to heat a cup of water on an electric burner as opposed to a gas burner. Ooh, we're getting close, 90 degrees. Gas ranges can be more expensive because the installation takes a little bit more. You have to have someone professional come in. Hopefully this will light and install those gas lines, so that can cost you a bit of money. And depending on the range that you purchase, you could be spending more money for that as well. However, there are electric ranges that are quite expensive too. Overall, they require a little bit more maintenance and can be a little bit harder to clean than electric or induction ranges, which can be quite relative because you might not mind that at all. There is an increasing amount of information out there about banning natural gas ranges, and that's something you should be aware of. There is a lot of research that shows natural gas stoves can release airborne pollutants so make sure you do your research before you go and invest a bunch of money into purchasing a range that requires gas to make sure that you're not going to get caught in some situation where you're not allowed to have it. The induction range uses an electromagnetic field to directly heat the cookware. Now, how do you work this baby? Oh, wait, now, how do you get it? This makes cooking with induction much more efficient. We could obviously see that with my experiment. It took very little time to boil one cup of water. Two minutes and 43 seconds. I mean, look, look at the boil on this thing. They heat up and cool down very quickly, and they offer a very precise temperature control. Because they're only heating up the cookware, the surface itself does not get hot. That's why you can install these into porcelain and other materials like that to give you a really sleek and cool look, an invisible cooktop, because the surface itself is not getting hot. You need special cookware, not super special, just not ceramic 
but cast iron or stainless steel would be perfect. And you've probably already guessed this by now because of the title of this video, the thumbnail, and my experiment that yes, induction ranges are probably the best way to go. Is it actually the best? I really don't have any idea if it's actually the best. How could I tell you that? How could I even know that? Is there a way to even know that? There's lots of chefs out there that use all three of these options and they swear by them. There's lots of you out there who join me on live streams and interact with me that say that gas is the best, that induction is the best. Rarely anyone ever says electric is the best. I mean, anyone can look up information on the internet and spit it out, which is what I basically just did, but you have experiences with these types of ranges and I wanna hear about it. So make sure you comment in the comment section below so that we can all benefit from what you think the best option might be and why. The main thing for me though is that you place it in the location that's best in your kitchen. So rewatch some of those tips from before and check out this video for more helpful advice on how to design the best kitchen ever. We'll see you later.